Good morning, Stoke Park, and welcome back. I hope you've had a really good half term. A little bit strange, there were, weren't so many places to go and not so many people to see, and the weather certainly wasn't as kind to us as it could have been, but I hope you enjoyed it nevertheless. Um, for those observant ones amongst you, this is the second time that I've recorded this assembly. Um, I believe there was a sound issue on the first one, so hopefully you'll get this loud and clear and be able to hear me. So first of all, my assembly today. I've got some images on the screen and they all relate to one country and I wonder if you can identify which one. Maybe you recognise the flag in the top left hand corner or maybe you recognise the outline of the country. There's also a clue on the photograph on the top right and this country is China. China is a really large country um, which um, is indicated in red on the map. There's the mainland, but there's also many islands that are connected um, and are influenced by this country. And the reason that I want to focus on China is because of one thing. And that one thing is connected to a calendar. Now, at the moment, due to the situation that we're in, dates are becoming really important. When will we come out of lockdown? When can we welcome you all back to schools? When will we be allowed to go on our holidays? But before we can answer those questions, because I certainly don't have the answer to those, I want to explain why my assembly focuses on a calendar connected to China. And that's all to do with the images in front of you. These are the 12 signs of the Chinese zodiac, and they are all linked to different animals. And if you know the year that you were born, you can identify which animal is linked to your Chinese New Year. Many Chinese believe that in the year that you were born, you might have some characteristics of the animal. So, for example, if you are um, a dog, you are friendly, you enjoy people's company. If you are a horse, you are incredibly hardworking and trustworthy. Well, this year, 2021, the Chinese have made it the year of the ox. Now, the ox is a large cow. It's an, o an ox has horns, unlike um, a normal cow, and they are very, very common in areas across Asia and China in particular. And I want to explain to you in my assembly today how this Chinese zodiac calendar came to be and how the animals became involved. And it all started with this man. This was the Jade Emperor. He was an incredibly important and powerful man back in Chinese history. And he decided that he needed a way to organize his time. He needed a way to organize different periods of the year, whether it was the summer or the spring or the autumn or the winter. And he decided that he was going to have a calendar and each part of the calendar was going to be named after a different animal because the Jade Emperor was an incredibly famous emperor because of his love of animals. But how, which animals could he choose? Obviously, he couldn't choose all of them. So he made a choice initially of 13 animals. And so he decided that in order to decide which part of the calendar should be named after which animal, he decided he would have the animals complete a swimming race. So he invited all 13 animals to take part. The animals were incredibly excited. Three animals in particular, the ox, the rat, and the cat, who were all good friends and had known each other for a long time, were all really pleased that they had all been selected by the Jade Emperor to take part in the swimming race. They were convinced that they would become part of his calendar. But in addition to these three animals, the Jade Emperor also chose some more to take part in the swimming race. And here they are. Now you might notice that there is an animal on there that we certainly don't see too many of in this country, and that's the dragon. 
Mind you, we don't see too many tigers or monkeys either. So these were the 13 animals that the Jade Emperor wanted to take part in his, race, in his river race. Remember, the first 12 animals who crossed the finish line would become part of his Chinese zodiac calendar and would have a section of the calendar named after him. The race started. All the animals worked incredibly hard, making their way across the fast flowing river. But unfortunately, some animals were doing better than others. The ox was a particularly good swimmer and didn't struggle at all in the fast moving current. However, the poor rat was not a good swimmer and found that the water was taking him quickly downstream. And the ox, being a kind and dependable friend, said, come on, jump on my shoulders, I'll help you get across. Everything was going fantastically well until as they just neared the bank, the rat was not a very good friend and turned out to be incredibly selfish and made a jump from the ox's shoulders onto the riverbank and became the first of the 13 animals to make their way across the river and they won the race. The ox was incredibly disappointed by his friend, but carried on across the river, carried on with the race, and was the second animal to make his way across. After him, one by one, the animals followed. But unfortunately, the Jade Emperor only wanted 12 animals for his zodiac calendar, and one animal, the last animal to make it to the riverbank, did not win a position on his zodiac calendar. And that, unfortunately, was the cat. Because, unfortunately, cats aren't particularly good swimmers. Eventually, the poor cat, who was wet and bedraggled and absolutely exhausted from fighting the fast-flowing current, did make it to the other side. But he was really disappointed that his friend the ox, and particularly his friend the rat, had not helped him across. And to this day, the cat and the rat are not particularly good friends and do not like each other. But some animals were successful. And of the 12 of the 13 animals, the Jade Emperor selected these 12 animals to name part of the Chinese zodiac calendar after each one of these. And 2021 is indeed the year of the ox. Now a new year is time for hope and celebration. And never more have we needed that than at the moment. And just like us, the Chinese celebrate with special foods at this time of the year, good things to eat, celebrations, enjoy being with family and friends. They also take part in lots of outdoor celebrations, just like this one, when hundreds and hundreds of celebratory lanterns are released into the night sky to signify the coming of a new year, the coming of hope, and the coming that after the darkness of winter, there is light. Also, at this time of the year, lots of the Jade Emperor's animals celebrate. Here in the images, you can see images of the dragon um, and the tiger, all of which celebrate good luck and good cheer and wish everybody a good new year. Now you may think why in February is Mrs Jenkins sharing this assembly with you. But today is a really important day as the Prime Minister is, is announcing to the country how hopefully we are going to come out of this lockdown period and how we are going to start welcoming you back into schools. So it may be the start of the Chinese New Year of the Ox, but for us here at Stoke Park, I'm hopeful that this is the start of a new chapter. When we can return to school, we can get you back into your classes, back with your friends and your class teachers, and back to learning. And with that in mind, I wish you all the very best for this week's learning. Hopefully I will have positive messages to send home in letters and newsletters later this week explaining how we can welcome you back and I along with the rest of the staff at Stoke Park look forward to welcoming you back to school very soon. Take care and I'll be in touch. Thank you.